Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Mrs. Donna, and I teach second grade at Calvary Bible Church. And we're going to kind of go through the morning just like I do if I was with the kids. But I'm missing you so much, I can't tell you how much I miss you. But I'm glad to do, it, do the lesson for you today. We always start our day by saying the main truth. And I will say the Lord, and then I call on my, the children's name, and then they say, So the Lord alone is God. And so if your name begins with A, B, C, D, E, F, or G, it's your turn to answer this part. The Lord alone is God. Now if your name begins with H, I, J, K, L, or M, or N, you can answer. The Lord Now, if your name starts with O, P, Q, R, S, T, or U, you will answer, the Lord alone is God. And if your name begins with V, W, X, Y, or Z, you will answer, the Lord alone is God. Now, what does that mean, the Lord alone is God? It means there's only one true God. And that is the Lord Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. It's three in one. The Lord alone is God. That's our main truth for today. Now, we usually go and we sing some songs. Before we sing, let's um, pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to show you um, how much we love you by praising you in song. We thank you for the gift of music. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to sing this song, and this is to the tune of If You're Happy and You Know It, but it's got new words, so sing it with me. If you know that Jesus loves you, clap your hands. If you know that Jesus loves you, clap your hands. If you know that Jesus loves you and you're on your way to heaven, if you know that Jesus loves you, clap your hands. Let's say, um, jump up high this time. If you know that Jesus loves you, jump up high. If you know that Jesus loves you, jump up high. If you know that Jesus loves you and you're on your way to heaven, if you know that Jesus loves you, jump up high. If you know that Jesus loves you, say amen. Amen. If you know that Jesus loves you, say amen. Amen. If you know that Jesus loves you and you're on your way to heaven, if you know that Jesus loves you, say amen. Amen. And how do we know if we're on our way to heaven? Only if we've asked Jesus to forgive us of our sins and... Um, and when we tell him we want him to be our Lord and Savior, then he will save us and we will be able to go to heaven. It's not by good works that we do, it's only by believing in Jesus who died for our sins and resurrected again. Okay, we're gonna do one more song and that song is, My God is So Great. I hope you all know this and can sing with me. My God is so great. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the valleys are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so great. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you, and you, and you, and you. Okay, good singing. Thank you for helping me on that. Okay. Now, we're thinking about how God can do things that nobody else can do. God is almighty. There's nothing too hard for him to do. Think about some of the things you've learned from the Bible about how God, uh, things that God can do that nobody else can do. If we look at the very first chapter in the Bible, Genesis 1, what do we learn? 
we learn that God made everything. He made the world and the, all the plants and all the animals. Only God could do that, make all those things from nothing. What about when he sent the 10 plagues? Can you, could anybody else do that? Could they send the frogs and turn the water to blood and make the hail come down? No, and do you know why God was doing that? He was doing that because Pharaoh would not let the people go. So what, there's another thing that God did. He sent the worldwide flood. Only God could flood the whole earth. And he did that because the Bible tells us that the people were wicked. So God was punishing the wicked. But there was one righteous man in his family. That was Noah. And God saved Noah because he did what was right. and He obeyed God. Um, today we're going to learn about choices that you can make. And some choices don't really matter. Like um, what color socks you wear. Or if you use colored pencils or colored crayons. Or if you like playing with Legos. Or maybe you'd rather jump rope. Those choices don't make any difference. But there are choices that do. Like whether you obey your parents. God tells us to obey our parents. Or when your brother is mean to you, are you mean back? What we do and say with other people is important. Those are important choices that we make because God tells us we are to love him with all our heart, soul, and mind, and we are to love others as ourselves. So we need to think about that and try to be kind to other people and to do what we know God would want us to do. So in today's uh, Bible lesson, the people are told that they need to make a choice. So um, I'm going to tell this lesson, but I'm going to pretend to be Elijah. So I'm just going to put this on to remind you that I'm pretending to be Elijah. And most of the story I'm going to read directly from the Bible. And you can find this in Kings. 1 Kings, beginning in chapter 17. What I want you to do is whenever you hear the word Ahab or Jezebel, I want you to say boo, because they were wicked people. They made the child, children of Israel um, worship idols. They worshiped other gods than the one true God. Um, and you remember what happened to Solomon when he married all those wives? He started worshiping idols too. And God told him, because you've done this, uh, you will not, your son will not rule over all of Israel. He will only rule over Judah. And the other um, 10 tribes of Israel will be ruled by someone else. So he was punished because he did not obey God. Last week we heard Jeroboam did not obey God either. He worshiped idols as well. So um, King Ahab, God told me to go to him and talk to him. And so I told him, the Lord, the God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there will be neither dew nor rain until my word comes again. So I, Elijah, gave Ahab a message from God. God was not going to let it rain. He was not going to send the rain. And you know what happens when it doesn't rain? Well, all our grass and all our plants, they die. They dry up. And then there's no wheat to make bread. There's no corn on the cob to eat, no vegetables. And God was going to keep the rain away for over two years. He kept the rain, kept it from raining for two and a half years. And so the people didn't have very much food to eat. He was punishing it 
them because they were worshiping idols. So about two and a half years after I told Ahab, God spoke to me again. He said, go show yourself to Ahab and I will send rain upon the earth. So when Ahab saw me, he says, oh, it's you, you troubler of Israel. I said, I have not troubled Israel, but you have, you and your father's house, because you have not followed the commandments of the Lord. You have followed the Baals. Now, therefore, send all of Israel up to Mount Carmel, along with the 400 prophets of Baal, who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent the people of Israel and gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel. And I said to them, how long will you try to follow Baal and Ashtoreth and the Lord? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And I have a picture of that, I think. There we are, gathered on Mount Carmel, and I'm talking with the people. So, this is what we were, I proposed, and this is what God told me to do. He said to, to have two bulls, which are male cows, and um, then you are to sacrifice them to the Lord. I will sacrifice one to the Lord and the 450 prophets of Baal will sacrifice a bull to Baal and we're going to we'll lay it on the altar and then we'll pray and ask our God to send fire to accept the sacrifice. So the prophets of Baal went first. They prepared the bull and called upon the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, Oh, Baal, answer us. But there was no voice. There was no answer. All from the morning till noon, there was still no answer. So I decided I had something I wanted to say to them. I said, cry aloud, for he is God. He must be thinking about something else. Or maybe he's gone on a trip. Or maybe he's asleep and you need to waken him. They cried aloud and they started uh, cutting themselves so that they bled. There they are, crying to um, Baal. And you can see their sacrifice in the back there doing everything they can to make Baal answer them and send fire. Finally, about three o'clock, I turned to the people and it was my turn and I said to them, come near to me. All the people came near to me and I took 12 rocks and I took the rocks, one for each tribe of Israel and I built the altar. That's the way they did it. The Lord had told them to use rocks and not to use anything else, but just rocks. So I had 12 of them, one for each tribe of Israel. Then I laid some wood on top of that. And then I cut up the bowl and laid the pieces on top of that. But then I did something that the prophets of Baal did not do. I had people take jugs and fill them with water. And I had four men carry the jugs and go get water. And while they did that, I started, and I made a trench around the altar. That means I dug kind of like a hole around, all the way around it. And when the men got back, I had them pour the four jugs of water over the altar, over the meat from the bull and the rocks and down into the trench. And then after that, 
I did it a second, I had them do it a second time. They went back and got more water and poured it over the bowl and the rocks and down into the trench. And then, so that was twice, so they had four jugs and another four jugs. And then I sent them for a third time and they poured even more water over that sacrifice. All together they had used 12 jugs of water. Everything was wet. The meat, the wood, the rocks, and the trench was full of water. And then I began to call on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O oh Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O oh Lord, are God, and that you have turned your hearts back. And then fire from the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering of the Lord. It consumed the wood, the rocks, the dust and lift up the water out of the trench. And then the people saw what the Lord had done and they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord is God, the Lord is God. And I said to them, seize the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. Then I told Ahab, go ahead and go eat. But there, for there's the sound of rushing rain coming. And then I went further up on Mount Carmel and I took a friend with me. And I bowed down on my knees and I prayed. And I asked God to send rain. And then I sent my servant to go look out over the Mediterranean Sea you look here, this is um, right where Mount Carmel was, and this is the Mediterranean Sea. That's where the people got the water from to pour on the sacrifice. And I said, go look to see if there's any sign of rain coming. Well, he came back, and he, he said, there's nothing. So I sent him out again. And I sent him out seven times until finally he saw a cloud. He said, there's a cloud. It's about the size of a man's hand. And I said, well, go tell Ahab, um, prepare your chariot and go down lest the rain stop you. And in a little while, the heavens grew black with clouds and the wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode in his chariot towards Jezreel. But the hand of the Lord was on me, Elijah. And I gathered up my garment and I ran and I outran uh, Ahab's chariot and horses because the God, God enabled me to do that. So in today's lesson, what did we learn? Okay, what did I do with my papers? How did God... What was the choice that the people were supposed to make? The people were supposed to choose either to worship Baal or to worship the Lord God. And what was the contest? What were we trying to get Baal or the Lord to do? To send fire from heaven to consume the sacrifice that we were making. Who was it that sent the fire? It was the Lord God. What did the people, who did the people say that they were going to worship? They said, the Lord alone is God, just like our main truth. They fell down and said, the Lord is God. So um, he sent fire. That was one thing that only God can do. What else did he do in today's lesson that only God can do? He sent rain. He withheld the rain for over two and a half years, and then he sent rain. And he also helped me, Elijah, outrun the chariots and the horses, which was pretty amazing too. 
they were worshiping idols and their idols were man-made they were made out of wood or gold or silver or something but they were made by men and they couldn't do anything we don't worship idols made out of gold or wood or things like that but they, we still have idols in our life an idol is anything that we love more than God so um, I have some things that maybe kids are idols to kids um, do you love your Legos you spend more time with Legos than you do God how about watching TV or playing video games um, how about your friends do you have friends that get you to do things that you know are wrong that God wouldn't want you to do I hope not um, maybe there's music maybe it's not just listening to music maybe you love singing in the choir or playing piano or violin um, maybe you spend a lot of time with your music maybe you love that more than God Maybe money can be an idol. Shoes, when my kids were little, um, they had to have the right kind of shoes. Sports, do your sports keep you from coming to church on Sunday morning? Do your sports uh, keep you so busy that you don't have time to spend time with God? Um, there's nothing wrong with video games or having a nice car or house but are those things that you spend more time and that you love more than you love God God made us in his own image and he wants to be our best friend he wants us to love him more than anything else and I have a little song I'll sing for you God is number one God is number one that's commandment number one. God is number one. He wants us to love him more than anything else. So I hope you don't spend so much time with other things that you forget about God. I hope that you spend time in God's word every day and that you talk to him and pray throughout the day as well. Um, you, those are ways that you can show him that you love him and also by obeying him and loving one another as well. I have a little game for you and that's why I have these letters A, B, and C and when we're at church I have them in the three corners of the room and the kids run to the um, or walk to the right letter to show me what they think the correct answer is so let's see if you can um, Tell me the right answer for these things. If I can find my, here it is. All right. What was missing in Israel for over two years? A, was it sunshine? B, was it snow? Or C, was it rain? C, it was rain. They hadn't had rain for a long time because God was punishing them. Number question number two God used a prophet in today's story was his name Daniel is a B is Elijah and C was an Asher B Elijah good job okay how many jars of water did Elijah have poured on his sacrifice this takes a little math so was it A, four jars? Was it B, eight jars? Or was it C, 12 jars? C, he had it till it was drenched. It was soaking wet. Is it easy to start a fire with wet wood? No, but nothing is too hard for God. God can do that. All right, next question. What did Baal do? A, send the fire? B, send rain or see nothing Stop. he didn't do anything did he he didn't answer their prayers at all what did um, God do did he send fire is a B is he sent rain to end the drought 
and C is both A and B. C, all the answers were right on for that one. God was doing lots of things. He's always do, doing things. Um, okay, and the last one was, after the contest, what did the people do? Did they worship Baal? A. Did they fall on their faces? B. Did they declare the Lord, he is God? They declared the Lord, he is God. They also fell on their faces. I would like to pray with you now. Dear God, thank you for making me and sending Jesus to die for my sins. Help me to live a life that pleases you. Oh God, may my heart belong to you forever. Amen. The Lord God is almighty. The Lord alone is God. Have a great week.